don't know why you don't like bacon. Yeah. Do you know why you started us on this? Why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Will's obsession yes. with bacon. Um, so the whole purpose for kind of doing the small group launch um, was kind of three points to take from Father to teach us three points. Um, the first was intimacy for small groups community. Um, the second is the early church did that. They were very much about like church and homes and doing that small group community time. Um, and lastly, like it seems to be something very successful for other faith denominations, other parishes. And so I really do hope that kind of doing something that was done by the early church that seems to be successful for others will lead to uh, further intimacy in a small community setting that will help like bring us back together as a large church mm. in a sense, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, but you guys are here too. So how did that happen? Besides the fact that I have good, like, manipulative, skills. yeah, pretty skills, <laughs> yeah. manipulative power, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so for me, this was something I'd never done before, right? I've done talks or I've done small groups or things like that, but I've never done one um, with video. Uh, so I thought that that was a neat idea. And I think our parish is at a really interesting time. We're growing. And so it's, to me, it's a pivot point for us in the history of the of the whole, which makes it exciting to work at and be a part of and doing things like this and having opportunities for people to feel connected to the parish I think is an important thing for us to do. So that's why I agree with this crazy idea. Yeah. How did yeah. you get sucked in? <laughs> uh, I think small groups are great. I think that there's a lot of value there. Um, there's an opportunity for people who maybe are quieter or the large group stuff can kind of scare them away or they don't know where to start. Sometimes there's this sense in the church that if I start doing something, I'm going to be doing it for the next 12 years. Mm -hmm. And with this series, it's five weeks. Try it for five weeks. Mm -hmm. See what it's like. Yeah. See if you like it. If it bears fruit, keep at it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, find something that does. You are you have a definitive start and a definitive end. Yeah. And that low commitment level, I think, is really appealing. And people who don't know when to jump in, it says, here you go, doors open, mm -hmm. try it out. Come with your own group of friends. You don't even have to meet strangers yet. Right, right. Eventually that would be good, but right now, do it with the people you already know. I think that that invitation is good. And I hope people take that. And I hope people take the time to meet new people or deepen the relationships they already have with whoever they're entering into this with. And I think too, what'll be really nice, um, and it's really my hope that, you know, we're building these cu first couple of weeks up to retreat, and then we'll be breaking out retreat uh, content, but not even that, just really diving into the fruits of the spirit. And I think the idea of really just evaluating ourselves spiritually every week, like how am I doing and living out fruit? Like, am I bearing what God calls me to bear? Yeah. And so to be able to walk with people who can hold me accountable in my spiritual journey I think makes the greatest difference. You know, sometimes it's like, well, how do I get a nudge forward in my spiritual life? Um, I just feel like I've been doing the same thing. I'm going through motions. I'm not seeing growth or change the way I want. To be able to have people to push me through that can sometimes be, you know, like a, a, a good place to go. So um, why don't we just take time to pray for those who are, you know, going to be joining us in small groups, and and then we'll make our fun smoothie. Yeah. So, may the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Okay, so this one right here, 
they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Like I, that captures the heart of what we're trying to do, I think, with small groups, that idea of coming together in people's homes and, and share hearts, right? And, and just to kind of grow in that. Yeah, Bess made that for me for Father's Day. And, and she is really the one who's brought kind of this love for, uh, for small groups, this idea of pursuing community in that way to our family. She grew up seeing her parents in a home group all the time. She was at Apex for a long time where they have house churches and she just saw the, the fruit of walking with other people, having that accountability and having those people that you can surround yourself with who have the same struggles that you do. And you realize you're not alone in this walk. So I was in a small group before I moved up here and it was with women who were, I was probably the youngest by maybe 10 years. Um, but there was a beauty in walking with these women of different ages because there was a lot to learn. They have a lot of wisdom and knowledge. And I think one of the things I love the most about that time reflecting was the prayer experiences. Um, like it started out as a Bible study. It started out kind of a theological. We want to understand scripture. And it morphed into a community of women who came together for that, but at the heart of prayer. And so... You know, whether it was shooting somebody a response to a group message like, hey, I'm really struggling with this, I need prayer, or hey, God is so good, this is what he's doing today. Um, just to have that be at the heart of this journey with these women over the course of, I think it was like six years. Um, and it's interesting to see how prayer and faith bring people together from different walks of life. So, um, do you guys have similar like prayer experiences or, I don't know, funny prayer story, I guess? I learned that you have to be careful about what you say or pray for. <laughs> yes, Go on. I, so I experience as well. I was outside with the kids and we were getting ready to go on a, on a walk and he was decked out in this whole fireman outfit of his helmet and his, his vest and whatever else he puts on, his tank. And I said something, and I swatted a mosquito off one of the kids. <laughs> and I said something about like, man, we just need to pray for a frost so all these mosquitoes die. <laughs> and Iggy, not missing a beat, just went. The Lord, please help our frost to come to school to, to let those mosquitoes die. Amen. Three-year-olds sometimes know how to pray. Well, there's like an innocence to that, right? You just, just know what you need. And mm -hmm. there's a humility in going to God in prayer. And sometimes I think maybe we're too prideful to go there. Or to invite others into that prayer with us. Or the, so We're worried about praying the right way. Right, yeah. I was saying, to me, I think the most humble prayer experience I've had is I was on a retreat once. Uh, reconciliation was part of the retreat. Uh, my penance wasn't our father. I got off incredibly easy. <laughs> um, but I was completely blanking on the words. For whatever reason, I just could not remember the words. So I went up to, to somebody and I said, all right, I've got a level with you. Uh, and I'm aware that I'm giving the talk tomorrow, <laughs> but I can't remember the words to the Our Father right now. Um, and Jim just responded, would you like to pray together? Uh, and that was a very powerful experience for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes we, we take the words of our prayer and we're so used to them that we we remember them in the social setting where we're praying, and we remember them when we're all going to the mass, but we can't remember them when we're doing it by ourselves, right? Almost as if sometimes we don't actually know what we're saying, mm -hmm. right? And there can sometimes be an intentionality in knowing the words better. Did you go back and, and, and look at it more closely? I say, yeah, I think I did. And I think one of the things that I really gained from that experience was was thinking about it and then trying to be intentional with things like tone, things like emphasis, right? My most common experience, and still my most common experience praying the Our Father is at Mass with lots and lots of other people, and it's mostly an exercise in keeping pace with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but those times where I pray on my own, and when I do other um, prayers that have been given to us through the ages from those who went before us. To not let them be rote prayers in the sense of, it's these words that I come out, but to be rote as in, these are the words 
but then have the, uh, the time and think as I go through it of where should I be putting emphasis? Where should I be pausing? And because those things change how it is. Right? And I think there is a beauty in, if we really go back to where some of our prayers are founded, right? Like even the Hail Mary comes from Luke. If we went back to Matthew you know, six, where Jesus actually gives it to the disciples, if we were to almost Lexio and really pray the words in scripture, they're not the exact same words that we mm-hmm. pray all the time. And so it might force us to be more intentional or key into something that God is saying to us. You know, maybe there's something that we really need to focus in on. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, Father Satish paused us in the middle of Mass at our Father to say, you know, like, forgive others, right? And we had to stop and really think about who in my life am I still hurting from? Uh, maybe who in my life I need to offer forgiveness, you know, to and ask and seek forgiveness out. So if we were more intentional I think in that way too of really praying it and so um, hopefully with this week coming up people will take the time to maybe look at that prayer in scripture maybe look at Luke's gospel and Mary's visitation and pray that out you know whatever it is but be more intentional in their prayer this week I wonder maybe instead of praying the Our Father I know we did that a little bit ago does it help to sometimes just read it as Jesus taught it Right, because I think sometimes we read scripture with a little bit more intentionality than sometimes we pray the prayers that we get from scripture. 